Did you watch the presidential debate? I did, and after seeing both that and people's reaction to it, big changes are coming and we need to get ready for them. In this video, we're gonna talk about how. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about uncertainty. I'm recording this video just a day after, the day after, the recent presidential uh, debate, if you want to call it a debate. And what I'm reacting to isn't the debate itself, but people's reaction to the debate. For many people who have been paying attention to the state of the world for a while, it came as no surprise that Joe Biden seems cognitively impaired. Uh, we've been seeing this uh, nonstop for almost as long as I can remember. And uh, the idea that it was a shocker to see him perform as he did in the debate was a bit of a shocker to me. Now, should it have been a shocker? Maybe not, because people's ability to uh, create, uh, I hate using the word cognitive dissonance because it's just, it becomes such a buzzword, but I think it's an appropriate uh, word to use in this uh, instance. Uh, people's uh, ability to create cognitive dissonance within themselves where they can witness something but disregard it in some way where they can you know file it off uh, under you know some other heading uh, is pretty profound uh, joe biden has been demonstrating that he is in cognitive decline due to the fact that he's so old uh, you know you can't criticize the person for this is what happens to our bodies as we, we get old, and it's it's sad, it's uh, it's unfortunate, uh, but you know it's not the fault of the person that's suffering from it. Uh, but it's been clear that uh, you know that's been the case with Joe Biden. But uh, you know people who were supporters of Biden for the longest time, you know, were filing uh, instances of things like that under well, it's being taken out of context, or it's you know incredibly rare, or you know you know choose your uh, explanation uh, to try to. Uh, explain it away. But I, I think maybe watching uh, uninterrupted for an hour straight, it became obvious to people that, you know, the situation that you were seeing with Biden was not something that is isolated or rare or taken out of context. They, people got to see it for what it was. That's frightening in and of itself because it's another reminder, if we needed one after COVID, it's another reminder of how strong people's, our peers, our, our fellow uh, citizens, ability to delude themselves is. Uh, the idea that this is shocking is evidence of the fact that people had been deluding themselves effectively for quite a long time. And again, that shouldn't be shocking that people have the ability to delude themselves, but it brings us to where we are today. And again, in this video, I wanna talk about uncertainty. Now, at the moment, I feel like there's been a fair bit of uncertainty injected into the situation here because uh, for, you know, for the past year, maybe even two, uh, I've felt fairly certain that in the matchup that we are heading into between Biden and Trump in the fall, I felt fairly certain that Biden was going to fail and Trump was going to uh, you know, be our next president. Uh, the reason for that is largely based on the, the lack of enthusiasm for Biden. I live up in New England. Uh, I live in rural New England where you know, you're as likely to see uh, Trump flags as you are uh, any else. Uh, but one thing that I was not seeing any of, uh, even, you know, driving around, you know, some of the more urban areas in New England was any kind of enthusiasm for Biden. And, you know, you'd think if you were going to see it, it would be, you know, you know, on one of these coasts here. And I just wasn't seeing any enthusiasm for Biden. Uh, and, you know, just based on that pretty much alone, I was thinking that when, once this matchup happen, you have a huge amount of enthusiasm for one candidate and kind of lukewarm, tepid enthusiasm if if even that for the other, it seemed like writing on the wall was saying Trump's going to win this one and you know Biden's going to lose. Now, whether I like that outcome or not, and I, here on my channel, despite the fact that I'm constantly uh, uh, criticized in the comments for talking about politics, I don't really tend to talk about politics here on my channel. I don't talk about my political leanings or preferences other than to say that I support peace and prosperity and, uh, you know, you know, take that for what it means. In, in the past, uh, peace used to mean that you were a liberal. Uh, you know, presently, it seems like if you want peace, you're considered an alt-right conservative. But, you know, I, I, I tend to like peace and prosperity in whichever uh, candidates uh, seem like they want to go in that direction. Those tend to be the people that get my support. But independent of what my political 
preferences were heading into this election, I did feel a degree of certainty about where things were going. And certainty itself is a valuable commodity. When you have certainty about something, even if it's something, even if it's an outcome that you don't favor, even if it's an outcome that you don't like, when you have that certainty, and here this comes right back to what we this channel is all about is prepping and preparedness. When you have certainty about whether something's going to happen or not, you can prep for it in a way that is appropriate to the likelihood of it occurring. You know, when you're, you're prepping for different things, there's always a degree of uncertainty uh, for it. If I absolutely knew that, actually, at the time of this recording, there's supposed to be a meteor flying by. Now, it's been a buzz all over the internet about this uh, a huge meteor and it's like a near-earth flyby apparently this one's not even inside the orbit of the moon so i'm not sure why there's all the f the fuss about this particular meteor because there's been a pl plenty of other meteors that have come closer that the the media doesn't tend to focus on at all but as an example of a meteor impact if i knew that there was going to be a meteor impact i could focus like a laser to be prepared for that now that's a difficult thing to prepare for but at least if you knew what was going to happen you could prepare for that specific event if you knew that there was going to be an emp strike doesn't mean you have to want <laughs> there to be an emp strike or to favor uh you know that that's something that happens but if you knew that there was going to be an emp strike and you knew when it was going to happen you could get everything put into your faraday cage and uh oh you're going to you might be able to hear some water. We've got gray water dumping into the greenhouse right now. Uh, you can put everything into a Faraday cage at the appropriate moment. If you know what the future holds, whether you like that future or not, you have a better ability to prepare for it. And up until yesterday, I felt like I had a pretty decent ability to prepare for the result of the upcoming election because I felt like I knew what the outcome was going to be. Yesterday, when people were acting shocked and horrified, and by people, I mean people to you know, more left-leaning, uh, you know, the liberal establishment. Uh, they seem like they're starting to circle their wagons about uh, removing Biden from the ticket. Um, if that happens, there's a fair degree of uncertainty about what's going to happen. A matchup between Biden and Trump, I think is fairly obvious that Trump is going to win that. But a matchup between Trump and anyone else is a lot more difficult to uh, predict. And I know this is going to be a lot of people that watch this video and they're going to say, well, Trump's going to win no matter what. You know, that kind of logic is not serving you very well. That is like saying, uh, you know, X type of race car is faster than anything else that could ever be, <laughs> you know, brought against it. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know who's going to be racing up against this race car, but this race car is faster. You know, if you have two things uh, that you're comparing with each other and you don't know one of those things, you don't know which direction to put the greater than, less than, or equal to sign. You have to know both values. And at this point, we don't know both values. Maybe it's going to be Biden. I tend to think at this point it's not. It seemed like the uh, establishment media was ready to, to flip on this. Maybe they saw it coming and they thought that the public just needed to see the spectacle of uh, embarrassment in order to get to that point. I don't really know what is going on behind the scenes. But it seems like the narrative has switched uh, at the moment where, you know, it looks like Biden is more likely than not, not going to be the candidate. And then again, I don't know that for, with 100% certainty, but it's looking like that might be the case. Now, that just opens up a whole can of worms of uncertainty for preparing for the future. There are so many different ways that that could be addressed. And uh, depending on how this gets addressed or doesn't get, to, uh, get addressed, uh, there are all sorts of ramifications uh, that come along with that. If Biden gets removed from the ticket, the ostensible reason, the obvious reason, is because he is in cognitive decline. Uh, there's, no other, there's no other legitimate reason, there's no other believable reason why that would be the case. Now, maybe the establishment will try to come up with some kind of a fake reason, like uh, he just wants to spend more time with family <laughs> or whatever. Um, and as we saw over the past year or so, people's ability to be told something that's untrue and find some way of coming to believe it uh, is vast. So, you know, maybe that will, it'll be as simple as that. Uh, Joe Biden has decided he wants to devote the next four years of his life to fishing and people just completely accept that and they don't think it has anything to do with, uh, or playing golf, as they were talking about uh, in the debates. Um, people will think it has nothing to do with cognitive de decline, but cognitive decline, what are you talking about? He, he wants to play golf uh, or go fishing. It, it, this has not, him dropping out has nothing to do with that. Maybe people will digest that. I think it's kind of unlikely though. I mean, again, people's uh, ability to believe lies notwithstanding. Uh, I think it, it would be very difficult to get a lot of people behind that idea. 
And the reason that this is important is because if you remove him from the ticket now, and the reason, obviously, clearly, maybe even literally stated, is he is in cognitive decline, what does that mean for the time between now and the end of January next year? If we're admitting that our president is in cognitive decline, that is immediate grounds for invoking the 25th Amendment. The 25th Amendment to our Constitution was an amendment that was created, I believe, after John F. Kennedy was assassinated, uh, that uh, formalized, kind of streamlined the process for replacing a president, uh, you know, in the event of their death or incapacitation in some way. Um, and uh, I believe it was, they tried to invoke it during Trump. I, um, but if, if it becomes uh, accepted and recognized that Biden is presently in cognitive decline, how does the 25th Amendment not get invoked? Because to not invoke it would be to say that for the next half of a year, we are going to have a president that is not capable of serving the role of president. He can't execute his office. So it would seem like the 25th Amendment would get invoked if Biden backs out of the race for the obvious reason that he's not uh, capable of executing his office. If the 25th Amendment gets invoked, I, you know, I don't know a lot of the inner workings of it. I presume that that would mean that uh, Kamala Harris would become the new uh, uh, acting president. And you know, what does that set things up for? Uh, if Kamala Harris becomes the new acting president, uh, does that mean that she would become the new nominee? Uh, and if she doesn't uh, get offered up as the new nominee for the next election, you know, why is that? Is the, the, is the party itself suggesting that they don't have faith in the current acting president? Again, uh, that would be the Democrats uh, saying openly that they don't think Kamala Harris is, you know, their, their best choice for uh, you know, being the president. And what would that do to her situation, her ability to govern in the, uh, in the interim? I mean, talk about lame duck. You know, what kind of situation would that set up? The type of such situation that sets up is a severe amount of uncertainty. You know, here in the prepping world, uncertainty is something that we deal with all the time. We don't know whether there's going to be an EMP strike. We don't know whether there's going to be a, uh, you know, meteor impact. Some things are more certain than others. Uh, you know, the, uh, the changing climate is something that is, I, I think it's about as close to certain as you can get. Uh, you know, the only uncertainty related to that is kind of timing and severity and, you know, what, are, what is going to be the, ac the exact mix of that. Um, but Uncertainty is something that you know is part and parcel to being a prepper because we're dealing with the future and the future is always to some degree unknowable. So if it is a situation where we are entering into a new phase uh, politically here in the United States over the next six months, where there is going to be an enormous amount of uncertainty uh, surrounding um, you know, our executive office, uh, you know, what are we going to do about that? And I, I, you know, one thing I just want to throw out here and it just popped into my mind that one outcome of this is that nothing happens, that things continue as they have been going and that Biden is continuing to be the candidate for uh, the, the next election. Uh, and that might make one think that, well, okay, well, that would be a situation where you remove that uncertainty, but still, there is always going to be that uncertainty because people will know the situation that we're dealing with and there'll always be that thought in the back of their minds, you know, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Is there going to be another one of these embarrassing debates? We have more debates coming up. Is it just going to be even more of a train wreck? Um, you know, even, even a situation of just keeping the status quo would not remove any uncertainty because the status quo is very unstable. Unstable, uncertainty, that's what pre preppers deal with. So how do we deal with that? How do we deal with the uncertainty of the political situation that we see in front of us? And the answer to that is the way that I deal with these types of things all the time, is that I don't look at the news of the day specifically so much, but I look at the, the basic trends that you see moving through the world. Uh, we see a moving trend here in the United States where, you know, the idea of the American dream is becoming farther and farther removed from people. Uh, the idea of uh, being able to earn a, a living that is, you know, an, an income that is going to provide a living for you that is in line with what a lot of people have as their expectation, that is diminishing and diminishing. And uh, there's an enormous amount of uncertainty uh, around energy and, you know, all the different things that we take uh, for granted as part of our, our life. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like a presidential candidate at this point, stuttering my way through this. Um, 
But the certainty that we all face is the idea that there are, there is instability in our future because the bedrock upon which the, we built our society was never built in a way that was sustainable. Uh, you know, you'll recall back over the past several decades, you know, there were, there were products and things that were like, you know, this is sustainably caught or this is sustainably forested or this is sustainably built. And sustainability has always been, uh, at least as far uh, back as I can recall in my lifetime, it's kind of like frilly, lefty leaning kind of thing where it's like, ah, eh, that'd be, that's kind of, that'd be nice, but it's sort of like pie in the sky. It's like, you know, I'd love to be sustainable, but it's just not realistic. Well, the alternative to sustainability is unsustainability. And where unsustainability brings you is to an end of things. If you can't sustain something, that means that that thing ends. So if we are living in a society which is based on unsustainable practices, which we all collectively agree that we're doing because, you know, sustainability is nice, but it's kind of pie in the sky and it's like, you know, that's, that's for liberals and, you know, the, the, the rich elite and stuff. So we all agree that we are living in an unsustainable society. Uh, generally speaking, I, it, my dad's always on me whenever I use the word all. I don't mean all because there's always somebody. But um, the general consensus is that we have chosen to live in an unsustainable society and unsustainable situations come to an end and we're seeing our society come to those ends at the moment. So the way that you prepare for unpredictability is to look at those basic kinds of realities that you see in the world around you and prepare for where those things are going. It doesn't really matter whether Trump or Biden or some question mark uh, presidential candidate gets into office because the underpinnings of our society are still unsustainable. We are still riding this society in a way that has to come to an end and no politician is going to be able to change that. Maybe politicians in the past could have kind of bent the arc of history one way or another, but when you are this close to the wall, that bend is not going to do you anything you're still gonna hit the wall. So that really is what we need to prepare for, not whether this candidate gets elected or that candidate gets elected because the arc of history is steaming us full steam ahead towards an end of our civilization. Again, and it just comes back to the idea that sustainability, having a society that can continue on ad infinitum out into the future was always seen, at least over my lifetime, as being, you know, it's kind of nice thing, but you know, not for everybody. When you're unsustainable, you have to come to an end, and we're coming to that end independent of whatever political candidate gets into office. So while the situation surrounding the debate and all of this might uh, seem like it adds a lot of unpredictability into our future, and in some ways it does, for the grand arc of history, which we are all riding on right now, it really doesn't make a lick of difference. And the reaction to that is the same as it is for all of uh, all the other types of things that we do as preppers. As preppers, we see our society as being unsustainable, as being uh, fragile, as being easily uh, uh, interrupted with you know supply chain in interruptions and uh, you know energy uh, interruptions and uh, interruptions in the in the the peace and prosperity of other people's lives, which you know you know create can create violence. Uh, you know, so as preppers, we see these types of things uh, coming towards us, and we prepare to put a lot of those burdens on our own shoulders. Uh, you know, whether that means getting more energy uh, collection equipment at, at your house, you know, to collect energy from the sun so you don't have to rely on the grid, whether that means uh, creating food collection equipment at your house in the form of gardens or animal husbandry so you can collect food uh, from that. You know, I, I said this recently in a video and I, I, I like this, um, this turn of phrase that, you know, you're, you have that surface area of the earth that you interact with and that surface area contact with the earth and the sky is what creates our life. People in the cities, uh, they have an incredibly small access to surface area of the earth. Uh, you know, everything's covered in concrete and um, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have any of that access uh, to the, the life-giving surfaces of the earth. But if you can get yourself into a situation where you have more of that earth contact, both with the sky and the the, the Earth's so soil surface, you know, you can start replacing some of these systems that, you know, if you live in the city or 100% uh, 
essentially, uh, re reliant upon our government and our society to fulfill for you. If you can move into a situation where you can start creating some of those services for yourself, then you become less reliant on an unreliable system and that is going to give you more reliability. The, the less you're reliant upon the unreliable, the more reliable your situation can be. So that's really the, the take home, uh, you know, after the debate and people's reaction to the debate and really anything that we face in our world, the more that you can take away from depending on society for things, uh, you know, the better off you're going to be because if someone is unsustainable, that that's kind of a, uh, a synonym for unreliable. Unsustainable means unreliable. And our society is becoming more and more unreliable by the day. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the debates. I watched a, a good half of them with my boy. Uh, he, I thought he needed a little pick-me-up and I thought uh, two old near senile men quarreling with each other would kind of um, uh, put some of his uh, problems in perspective and we had, had a lot of fun watching that. I hope you had some enjoyment watching that as well. You know, just because situations in the world are not going in a positive direction doesn't mean that you can't enjoy some of the gallows humor on the way down. And while that might seem inappropriate and callous, the alternative is the exact same thing, but you're not not having fun, at least on the way down. So enjoy your days. You know, the way things are right now, uh, you know, it might be tough and times are tougher than they were in the past for many of us, but they're nowhere near as difficult as they're going to be in the future. So appreciate the time that you have. Appreciate the days that you have. Take advantage of them uh, today for myself personally. Uh, it's going to be a productive day for me. I, I, I've had a lot of ups and downs lately myself for the past three months. I've really been nursing a sprained ankle and you guys maybe have watched my channel, know that I've mentioned my sprained ankle in the past. Uh, yeah, it's something where I keep not letting it heal enough and then I kind of re-injure it. We've had issues with porcupine uh, lately. I've had to hunt down two porcupine in the woods, uh, which we did end up eating. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing a video about Butchering one of the porcupines, I recorded it earlier. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna share that video or not. I'm not sure how much I can even show of it here on YouTube. Um, uh, but uh, stalking porcupine uh, through the woods at night uh, in my flip-flops and pajamas, uh, going through a fern forest where I can't even see the ground. I kept stepping in pits and I kept retweaking my ankle. So, you know, this has been one of the least productive springs that I've ever had just because I've been kind of nursing this one injury. I've got projects I want to work on. So today I'm hoping to get onto some of those. And if you are in a situation where you have a fully functioning ankle <laughs> and fully functioning body, take advantage of that situation when you have it, uh, you know, and make your situation tomorrow better than it is today. Prepping and preparedness isn't about comparing yourself to you know, other people. It's just comparing about comparing yourself to yourself yesterday. If you can get yourself tomorrow in a better position than you were today, in a better position than you were yesterday, that's progress. And that's all you can really ask for yourself. All the rest is just about speed. And the speed just comes down to whatever your personal desire is and whatever your personal ability situation is. But whatever your personal situation, all you can really ask of yourself is to try to get yourself tomorrow better than you are today. And the way that you do that is by putting in the effort here and now, today, while you have the opportunity. If you want some tips about how to do that, here's a link to a video up here where you can check out where I talk about some of the easy things that you can do to just start down this journey, even if you are starting from square zero. Square zero. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.